Good afternoon, and welcome to the second annual State of the College. I'm Laura Belmonte, Dean of the College of Liberal Arts and Human Sciences. The great Nikki Giovanni once wrote, we love because it's the only true adventure. And our celebrated colleague is absolutely right. Loving this magnificent college is a grand adventure. And for me, it's the adventure of a lifetime. Three years ago, you welcomed my wife, Susie, and me with open arms. Since then, we've come face to face with unparalleled challenges in our college. And yet, here we are, an erudite community, stronger in our resolve than ever before. While some race to Mars, we push full throttle on a relentless pursuit of knowledge in the social sciences and the humanities. We harness and share our wisdom to help ensure a sustainable future for this planet and all of its inhabitants. Our exploration of these disciplines is essential at this university both today and historically. Virginia Tech is celebrating its 150th anniversary this year. And while Tech has experienced an anthology's worth of change since 1872, a foundational piece of remains and thrives in our college, the humanities. Courses in language and literature have anchored Virginia Tech curricula since the first students hiked the mountains to enroll in Blacksburg. As home to a majority of the critical disciplines that comprise the humanities and the social sciences at Virginia Tech, our college has and always will shape the trajectory of this technology-rich university. Together, we've come together to celebrate the wide range of disciplines in our college, and we've come to celebrate you the outstanding faculty and staff who work tirelessly to serve our students and society. Soon, you'll hear colleagues from across the college speak about their latest accomplishments and efforts to achieve our vision. First, I'd like to share some numbers with you to demonstrate the collective power of this college at Virginia Tech and around the world. Using benchmarks developed by the Association of American Universities, faculty in this college earned more than half of all of the awards deemed highly prestigious at Virginia Tech last year. Faculty in this college have published over 350 journal articles and essays since 2021. Faculty in our college produced more than 130 books since 2019, by far the most of any college at Virginia Tech. At least 150 research grants and fellowships went to our faculty last academic year, including highly coveted awards from the Guggenheim Foundation, the Mellon Foundation, the National Endowment for the Humanities, and the American Council of Learned Societies. In the same year, more than 80 of our faculty members served as editors of journals and other scholarly publications. These are only a few of the reasons why I believe that Virginia Tech should be as renowned for its excellence in the liberal arts and human sciences as it is for its world-class programs in engineering, science, and agriculture. Students are enrolling in our college from around the world because of the reputation that you helped build. We are home to 4,000 undergraduate students, and we've seen enrollment rise by 26% since 2012. And the vast majority of these students flourish here. Our college proudly boasts a 92% first-year retention rate, 20 points higher than the national average. The alumni that many of the people in this room educated, mentored, and advised are pursuing dream careers in a variety of fields from law and education to literature and broadcasting. And with more than 40 degrees, our graduate programs continue to entice the next generation of brilliant researchers and practitioners from across the globe. Because of the dedication of our faculty and staff, our college has cultivated a deep trust with our students and our entire community. 
we eclipsed the university fundraising goal with 22.4% of our alumni giving to support our students and our research last year. And since the 2019-2020 academic year, our college has received $12.2 million in new gifts and commitments. All of this is possible because of the hard work of our academic faculty and staff and our college advancement team. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Of course, the only constant in life is change, and I have found that to be especially true in higher education, especially lately. This academic year, we had the honor of welcoming the spectacular School of Public and International Affairs by way of a strategic alignment involving three colleges. And while we certainly miss our colleagues in the School of Performing Arts, I am elated to have SPIA and its tremendous faculty, staff, and students joining us. This is an ideal match as SPIA brings a long history of collaboration with multiple departments in our college, from cross-listing courses to co-leading the Washington semester for undergraduates in DC. SPIA also brings three highly touted programs, Urban Affairs and Planning, the Center for Public Administration and Policy, and Government and International Affairs. In addition to its superb undergraduate program supported by faculty from across the school. Now, I would like to introduce our first faculty speaker, Ralph Hall. Dr. Hall joined Virginia Tech in 2009 as an assistant professor of urban affairs and planning, and now serves as associate director for SPIA. I'm thrilled to welcome Dr. Hall to discuss his research and the incredible work of his colleagues in SPIA. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here and to now be an official member of the College of Liberal Arts and Human Sciences. Before saying a few words about my research to give you a taste of SPEAR, I'd like to begin by thanking our colleagues in the college for welcoming our school and for working very hard behind the scenes to make this transition as smooth as possible. We are excited by the possibilities that this transition brings and believe SPEAR's mission of training the next generation of urban planners, public administrators, and international affairs experts through transdisciplinary, experiential, innovative, and problem-driven learning, research, and outreach aligns extremely well with the strategic vision of the college. The research undertaken by SPEAR faculty and students also centers on improving the human condition and well-being of society. My scholarly and professional work broadly focuses on advancing and applying the concept of sustainable development to a range of socio-technical systems. In developing regions, this work centers on rural water supply and sanitation systems in countries such as Senegal, Mozambique, and Malawi, with a specific focus on multiple use water services. In parallel with this, I've also been studying the rise of smart cities in countries such as India, and more recently have been exploring the use of blockchain technology to improve food security in last mile agricultural communities in Kenya. It is this latter research area that connects with our study of food security and access here at Virginia Tech. In developed regions, my research centers on leveraging policy, economics, and law to encourage technological, organizational, institutional, societal change towards sustainability. In addition to focusing this work on sustainable transportation systems, I'm currently teaching and developing research agendas around the future of work, new economics, and agrivoltaics in the state of Virginia. If you like the sound of this type of research, I encourage you to reach out to me and also explore the work of some 50 colleagues in SPEAR who are engaged in cutting edge research from the local to global scale. Thank you very much. In our college, we create works of lasting intellectual, cultural, and aesthetic value. We strive to deliver immediate and enduring contributions to society and to ensure that policies and technologies are in service to humanity. Our next two presenters will demonstrate how we place humanity at the forefront of everything we do. The first speaker is Sylvester Johnson 
the director of the Center for Humanities and the Tech for Humanity Initiative, followed by Emily Satterwhite, the director of Appalachian Studies at Virginia Tech. Well, good afternoon. Uh, the Center for Humanities is boldly supporting humanistic, human-centered scholarship throughout our College of Liberal Arts and Human Sciences. Each year, we are sponsoring faculty across every department and school in the college as humanities associates, elevating their work, we're helping to fund their research, and we're creating greater visibility for the value that humanities scholarship brings to the university, to the commonwealth, and to our world. Now, in a complex society that faces tremendous challenges, the humanities have a special capacity to shine a light on the most important issues of our time, empowering individuals and communities to grow, to learn, and to experience the benefits that knowledge can bring. This is why we were especially excited about our Prison Education Initiative, which is creating opportunities for incarcerated students in Virginia to experience the transformative power of humanities education. By partnering with the Virginia Department of Corrections, the Center for Humanities has just offered Virginia Tech's first in-person college-level humanities course to incarcerated students in Virginia. The class was designed in collaboration with our undergraduates who've been working with our Humanities Center to experience firsthand the value of public humanities. This July, we launched a new a journal that is digitally hosted entitled Unlocked, and it's publishing writings and art by incarcerated authors in Virginia. We're excited to build on this effort to leverage the transformative power of humanities for all Virginians. We're also creating new ways to bring humanities to bear on making technology work with, not against, democracy. In the summer of 22, uh, 2022, we hosted our first online public interest technology summer speaker series to enable technologists globally to learn how to make public interest and civic-mindedness more central to designing, to implementing, and to regulating technology. In addition, we're excited that Professor Rishi Jaitley, a global humanities advocate and public interest technology leader, has joined us as a distinguished humanities fellow and professor of practice in the Academy of Transdisciplinary Studies to help advance our Tech for Humanity initiative, which is achieving human-centered outcomes for technology and innovation. Virginia Tech Center for Humanities recognizes that the challenges shaping our world are also opportunities for the humanities to unlock the power of humanity. The problems of our global society that we face are great, but so is our resolve to unleash the best of human talent, creativity, complex thinking, and transdisciplinary problem solving as we work together to ensure that our future is one of human flourishing. Thanks. At Virginia Tech, the Appalachian Studies program melds scholarship, teaching, and activism in examining and contesting power. We work to insist that Virginia Tech recognize the ways in which its history is interwoven with the forced displacement of Tutelo people and the enslavement of black people. As part of this work, we protected and restored Solitude House and the Fraction Family House. As Director of Appalachian Studies, I am proud of what we've achieved, thanks in part to a college that has protected us from those who prefer not to acknowledge the university's presence in a region stigmatized as backwards and irredeemable. One of our undergraduate courses, Appalachian Community Research, annually receives a grant from the Appalachian Regional Commission to support community-driven projects that enable students to respond effectively to local and regional needs. Our societal health class, co-taught with science and technology studies, requires students to participate in collective action in order to help them feel community engaged and empowered to enact change. In 2019, students in that class helped lead a successful global youth climate strike and shepherded the university to strengthen its climate action commitment. This year, students participated in the Holler to Holler Mutual Aid Trip, which focused on building supportive relationships with people in Eastern Kentucky and on better understanding how fossil fuel driven climate change and fossil fuel extraction exacerbated the summer's catastrophic flooding. Given the legacy of coal and gas industries in the region and the need for a just transition away from fossil fuels, Appalachian Studies is involved in 
and grateful for the college's support for the nascent environmental and climate justice program. We hope that participation in the Academy of Transdisciplinary Studies will strengthen Appalachian studies and collaborations for justice. We believe in collaborating across disciplines. One of my top priorities was to establish the Academy of, of Transdisciplinary Studies, to unite our faculty programs and courses, and to address complex societal problems. And in our college, we also work to create real change rather than simply talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion. We promote cultural awareness and understanding. We foster respectful engagement. And we actively nurture a campus climate that is welcoming for all faculty, staff, and students. This is a major reason why we proudly sponsored the new Lavender House the first ever living learning community at Virginia Tech for LGBTQ plus students and their allies. While we recognize the need to do more in promoting diversity, equity, and inclusion in our college and beyond, we believe we are headed in the right direction. At nearly 40%, we consistently rank among the top three colleges at Virginia Tech in the enrollment of underrepresented minorities and underserved students. We have also taken steps to better understand our most vulnerable populations and contemporary struggles caused by institutional racism and the exposure of structural inequality. Our Juneteenth Scholars Program is designed to recognize the importance of scholarship in understanding the connection between all of these issues and the Juneteenth holiday. Our next speakers are Carlos Evia, the director of the Academy of Transdisciplinary Studies, Shaila Mera, the assistant dean for diversity, equity, and inclusion, and Clara Song, a Juneteenth scholar and deputy director of the Tech for Humanity initiative. The Academy of Transdisciplinary Studies is now a reality. What started as an idea from Dean Belmont in 2020 is now transforming into an active and busy new wing of the College of Liberal Arts and Human Sciences. The Academy is not a new department or school. Rather, it is a hub of curricular innovation and research ideas that combines the faculty and student talent existing in our college and across the university with initiatives to adapt, improve, and create academic minors, majors, and areas of inquiry that, by definition, do not fit in one single academic department. The Academy has established three main areas of concentration, each one with a faculty leader, to foster community and walk across and beyond our existing disciplines. These areas are space and place, led by Anna Seida, Associate Professor of History, digital transformation and scientific collaboration, led by Richie Jaitley, new professor of practice housed in the Academy of Transdisciplinary Studies, and identities and intersectionalities, led by Shaila Mera, Assistant Dean for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Shaila will tell you in a few minutes about the work happening in her area. But I want to say that space and place is ventilating disciplinary silos as Anna, for example, collaborates with partners across colleges and the community to develop the minor in food studies. In digital transformation and scientific collaboration, Rishi has been catching up with existing programs, including the very popular Adapting Brain and Behavior minor, and ex exciting projects like the language, and sci language Sciences major, digital games and interactive entertainment, communicating and engaging with science and content operations. The Academy has many other projects in different stages of development, and our assistant director, Susan Stinson, provides support behind the scenes with core substitutions, advising, and lots and lots of emails and Zoom meetings. The Academy is also fueled by solid partnerships with the Pathways Office for General Education, the institutes across the university, the Honors College, and other entities. We keep building relationships to give students and faculty opportunities to explore complex problems and challenge disciplinary structures. And we are just getting started. In the college, our disciplines center the study of human diversity and how the social world is constructed. For this reason, diversity, equity, and inclusion are cornerstones of how the college meets its academic mission. The examples I'll give here barely scratch the surface in illustrating how college faculty prioritize the critical study of identity and justice 
in their teaching and research. On the teaching and research side, programs such as Juneteenth Scholars, along with other faculty research support, fund projects that center the knowledges of minoritized people in research that is designed to help us understand both injustice and resistance globally. Research topics have ranged from indigenous people's knowledge in science to the apocalyptic political theology of genius polymath and sociologist W.E.B. Du Bois. In the Academy of Transdisciplinary Studies, DEI is a through line woven throughout all the curricular programs, from tech for humanity to disability studies and everything in between. Existing interdisciplinary efforts in critical race, ethnic, and gender studies are now in the academy in the identities and intersectionalities area, fostering collaborations and curricular development in these essential areas of study. On the student learning and engagement side, the college launched Lavender House Living Learning Community for LGBTQ plus students and allies. Living learning communities are residential curricular programs. They are high impact learning opportunities that promote retention and academic success. All residents of Lavender House take a course in queer studies that was developed in the college for this community. As a signature DEI program in CLAWS, Lavender House represents the college's commitment to building inclusive community for the university at large. Lastly, we continue to have the most diverse student body of any of the colleges on campus. 39.3% of this year's undergraduates are from underrepresented or underserved backgrounds, and over 20% of our students are first-generation college students. This is in keeping with the college's mission to increase access to an education that prepares students to engage across difference, ethically and with integrity, both in their time here and in the world beyond Virginia Tech. How do individuals struggle with and adapt to contemporary challenges in politics? We often focus on detecting and following the latest development at the macro level. As a result, we often miss the ramifications of macro level trends on individuals' lives. My research as a Juneteenth scholar and involvement in the Tech for Humanity Lab focus on this gap. During the past summer, I was selected as a Juneteenth scholar. Thanks to the support, I spent this past summer working on a project on ambassadors' race and influence on U.S. foreign policymaking and diplomacy. The project involves collection of the data on attributes of individual policymakers, as well as an analysis of the data with statistical and data science tools. I had the fortune to work on the project with Cassandra Kogan as a research assistant. She brought enthusiasm and self-motivation, as well as a deep understanding of international relations. I'm also fortunate to work as the Deputy Director of the Tech for Humanity Lab. The lab is a transdisciplinary laboratory at Virginia Tech, focusing on the impact of technology on the human condition. Our lab studies the impact of technological advances on a broad spectrum of security issues. Early research initiatives include surveillance, censorship, data manipulation, and data misuse. These activities would not have been possible without the support from Dean Belmonte and my colleagues at the College of Liberal Arts and Human Sciences. And I'm excited about how these projects will unfold in the future. Oftentimes, history is taught through the lens of international conflict. But what can we learn from the uncensored perspectives of service members? Ed Gittry, the director of the American Soldier in World War II project and an assistant professor in the Department of History will speak next about a remarkable project that seeks to answer this question. Following Dr. Gittry, you'll hear from Amy Azano, director of the new Center, Virginia Tech Center for Rural Education and an associate professor in the School of Education on her efforts to counter stereotypes and empower the people of this region and beyond. This past December, on the 80th anniversary of the attack against Pearl Harbor, a transdisciplinary team launched the American Soldier in World War II. An unparalleled open access digital archive and publication 
funded by the National Endowment for the Humanities. We digitized over 65,000 pages of uncensored reflections, handwritten by active duty personnel, describing their wartime experiences and military service, from Alaska to Italy to New Caledonia. Previously, these documents had languished on microfilm in the National Archives. We set out to change that. And by we, I mean 7,600 volunteers from across the globe. Their commitment was awe-inspiring. So too was the goodwill and dedication of so many members of the Virginia Tech community. When I first encountered the documents in 2009, I knew they were special. They captured the unfiltered, real-time experiences of ordinary soldiers and officers in ways that no memoir ever could. The greatest generation, shrouded in myth and legend, came alive as real, relatable people with all their grievances, hopes, humor, and ordinary fears. In my mind, this project embodies Tech for Humanity. It's harnessing technology to shine a light on our common humanity and our shared history. Thank you. Rural education isn't just about students and teachers and school buildings. It's an ecosystem, tightly connected to its socioeconomic structure and often influenced by global factors in unique ways. At the new Center for Rural Education, we are passionate about supporting and growing educational opportunities for rural students, disrupting deficit narratives about rural people and places, and collaborating with rural communities in and around Southwest Virginia and across the Commonwealth. We want to invest in rural talent across the lifespan. We are a university-level center housed in the Institute for Society, Culture, and Environment. In addition to IC, the center is supported by the college, the School of Education, and the Office for Outreach and International Affairs. And I'm hopeful that the center will give folks a place to land so that we can support each other's various efforts and build transdisciplinary teams to highlight models of innovation and excellence, while also addressing pervasive challenges in rural places related to education, technology, local economies, healthcare, and the environment. You may not think of yourself as a rural education scholar, but if you come hang out with us, we may convince you otherwise. We hope to learn more about your outreach and scholarship and partner with you in the future. The academic programs in our college consistently rank among the most popular at Virginia Tech. And we're ready to climb the rankings even higher. In the past five years alone, we've introduced 23 new majors and minors. Today's final presentations will feature John Tedesco, the new director of the School of Communication, and Bill Roth, the voice of the Hokies, and the leader of our ultra-competitive sports media and analytics major. You'll also hear from Monica Kimbrell, our Associate Dean for Undergraduate Academic Affairs, followed by reflections from two fantastic students. It's an exciting time for communication at Virginia Tech, and word is spreading. We had a near 25% increase in applicants to the School of Communication in 2022, marking the first time we've received more than 1,000 freshman applications. We welcomed 152 freshmen to the class of 2026. We also welcomed 108 transfer students, 12 new graduate students, and four new faculty to the school this year. Both our undergraduate and graduate student enrollments are the largest in our history. We launched the advertising major this fall and have already 48 students declared as majors. In the few months that I've served as director, I've enjoyed hearing about the impressive internships our students completed with leading local, national, and global media organizations. Our faculty continue to earn recognition for their research and teaching, and they provide important leadership to national and international communication associations. We welcome you to visit our website and follow us on social media to learn more about the students, faculty, and alumni of the School of Communication. And now here's Bill Roth with an update on our sports media and analytics major. Well, thank you, John. I'm thrilled to share such exciting news about our sports media and analytics program. SMA is about journalism and writing and production. It's based in our incredible studio on campus. Our students want to be broadcasters and writers and bloggers, producers, directors, or hundreds of jobs behind the scenes in this growing field. Our 3304 Sports Digital Platform has given our students the chance to host shows, cover games around the country. In fact, we took 12 students to New York City for the ACC Men's Basketball Tournament this past spring. Tech student Kevin Domenico served as the voice of the Salem Red Sox again this past season through our unique partnership with the Red Sox. Kevin was named an All-American 
as one of the top five student broadcasters in America. In fact, Tech was ranked fifth by STAA, the fifth best school in the country for aspiring sportscasters. This ranking really hits home with high school students and their parents and guidance counselors all over the country. We're really excited about the growth of our sports media and analytics program and you're going to see more of our students around the country on televisions and stadiums like this all over the country in the coming years. Hi everyone, our undergraduate students are back. In fact, we have over 4,000 students in about 43 majors this year. This represents about 14% of the undergraduate student body at Virginia Tech and includes about 1,600 underserved and underrepresented students. With the launch of new majors in elementary and secondary education and the programs from the School of Public Policy and International Affairs and our long-standing traditions of excellence, in other high demand areas, the college is poised to continue preparing students for their dreams and goals. Last fall, we launched an intentional model of holistic advising support. This plan created an opportunity to evaluate the importance of our work from our advisors and provide consistent support to students. This was a timely decision with increased demands for academic and career advising during a challenging time for many students. Our team also collaborates with many campus resources, including Cook Counseling and the new residential well-being model with the Division of Student Affairs. Despite the challenges of the pandemic, our students are continuing to participate in internships, undergraduate research, study abroad, and many different student organizations. Gaining experience combined with excellence in academic programs, teaching, advising, and partnerships with campus resources, our retention and graduation rates remain very high, much higher than the national average, and our average time to degree remains less than four years. So we're really excited, and thank you to each of you for being such wonderful partners. Hi, my name is Hannah Shore and I'm a public relations major with a minor in event and experience management and a concentration in marketing. Being a part of the College of Liberal Arts and Human Sciences is something that I'm proud of. Not only am I challenged by award-winning faculty, but I'm supported by amazing peers, staff, and faculty who want me to reach my full potential. I've always said that there is something special that happens here, a spirit that you won't find anywhere else. This spirit is rooted in our eagerness to serve and our ability to come together in times of need, no matter how big or how small. After graduation, I plan to plant this spirit and watch the impact that Virginia Tech had on me spread to new places. Whether I'm pursuing a graduate program, working as a communication specialist, or using my skills in a PR firm, I want the values I learned here to shine through. Here at the College of Liberal Arts and Human Sciences, we strive to create an environment where students can thrive academically and also personally. I am proud that I will soon be a graduate of this special college. My name is Jamal Ross. I'm a fourth year student here at Virginia Tech pursuing a dual degree in political science with a legal studies option and philosophy, politics, and economics, all housed within the College of Liberal Arts and Human Sciences. Reflecting my experience as a student within the college, it has been hands down amazing. I knew when coming to such a large university, I wanted to find a program in college that had three main things, a strong support system, networking opportunities, and relationships with professors and fellow students. I can say that the College of Liberal Arts and Human Sciences has knocked this out of the park. During my time at Virginia Tech, I wanted to do more, and something that drew me to apply to the university was the impactful model of Ud Prozum. This led me to serving as the 2022-23 undergraduate student representative to the Virginia Tech Board of Visitors. Within this role, I work with the highest level of university decision makers and administrators to share the student voice and express the thoughts, feelings, and experiences of over 30,000 undergraduate students. I've also been able to take advantage of the study abroad opportunities our college has to offer. I spent the most time in Switzerland and worked closely with my professors and peers to complete a semester-long research project and presentation. None of this would have been possible without our college and support faculty and staff gave me throughout my time abroad. After graduation, I plan to attend graduate school and attain my Master's of Higher Education Administration. I want to then go on to law school to prepare for a career in education law or possibly a campus attorney. Thank you all for your support and of course, let's go Hokies! 
students like Hannah and Jamal remind us why we are all truly here, to serve our students and society. It's been my pleasure to recognize just some of the awe-inspiring work happening in this wonderful college. Thank you very much.